Is Toyota's Mirai the future or a future? That is the question. Toyota has brought together a room full of journalists from all over the world to demonstrate in advance of its launch next year for 2015. It's Mirai fuel cell sedan. A four-seater with 155 horsepower. The vehicle was an all-electric car as an alternative to the battery electric vehicle. This is all about fuel cell cars. This is a front-wheel drive vehicle. It's quiet. It sounds a little bit different. It's a Lexus quality vehicle. It's actually quite nice. And Toyota is throwing the, the marketing book at this vehicle in every angle to, how do you want to say it, uh, overcome the chicken and egg problem for lack of infrastructure, push a rock uphill against uh, public perceptions and uh, the populist cause that is Tesla and uh, other electric vehicles that see the world view of changing away from gasoline in a different light. As it is, this is a car that fuels up in five minutes. It has 300 miles range. It really has no perceptive downside, except there's not a whole lot of hydrogen stations in the country, and they're working on that. This is an all new technology, and for uh, our edification, we have Jackie Birdsall, an engineer from Toyota's Technical Center here in Newport Beach, to show us Toyota's new Mirai and what's under the hood. Uh, normally, if we ever do something like this, we'll have an Atkinson cycle or some other internal combustion <laughs> engine. Jackie, what are we looking at here? Um, this, this is not a gas engine. Where's the, there's a motor someplace <laughs> here, isn't there? Yes, there is an AC synchronous motor that's uh, underneath uh, this right here is the power distribution unit. And then below that is the motor, and that's what actually drives the vehicle, so it is front-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. But uh, where the actual engine is, what creates the electricity, is underneath the seats. Very different from what we're used to seeing in the engine compartment. <laughs> oh, wow. So this isn't actually the power that moves the car? Nope, this is just telling where the power needs to go to propel the car. But the power itself comes from the electricity, comes from the fuel cell, which is underneath the vehicle. So you see the orange cables coming in. Mm -hmm. Those are high voltage lines, same as with the normal hybrid vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. So those are coming in from the fuel cell stack. And essentially all this is is a giant computer that's saying, OK, this much energy needs to go to the wheels. This much we can send back to the battery to recharge the battery. It's essentially what's, what's assigning the power to either the wheels or to the battery. This is borrowing a lot of the uh, lessons learned in technology from a, a Camry hybrid. However, of course, there's no gas engine, mm -hmm. but you're using a nickel metal hydride battery. Correct. Are you using the exact same propulsion motor or a different motor? We are borrowing a motor. Um, it is a lot of the same hybrid synergy drive that we have had, you know, gained all of this really useful experience with over the last 20 years. So that's one of the ways we were able to reduce the cost so much. But there is a lot of the hybrid synergy drive in here. The only difference is instead of the gasoline, we have a fuel cell. And, and again, the propulsion motor's horsepower approximately? 155. 155, mm -hmm. good for a zero to 60 in nine, nine seconds. Nine seconds, mm -hmm. range is 300 miles. Range is 300 miles, takes about five minutes to fill up. What kind of maintenance does something like this need? Actually, you're not the first person to ask me about this. So this is an uh, air intake system, right? Uh -huh. So we have an air filter. It's gonna be one of your main points of maintenance is just the air filter. Gotta change the air and the other one is the deionizer. So mm -hmm. for the coolant um, that we're using to keep the fuel cell stack cool, because it has to be humidified for the protons to exchange across the membrane. It can't exceed 100 degrees C or boiling. So uh, we have to keep it really cool and that's our coolant. And so the deionizer has to be replaced maybe once every three years. Is that an expensive piece? It's a filter, essentially. <laughs> Not too much. So two filters? Pretty much. No spark plugs? There's no spark no plugs. No oil changes? There's nothing burning in this vehicle. Well, nothing burning? <laughs> no, nothing burning. Does California now mandate a whole 30% or 33%? I've heard varying. 33%. Renewable? Yep. Senate Bill 1505 requires 33% of hydrogen that goes into these vehicles be renewable. So when these vehicles go into production in 2015, one third of the energy will be renewable energy. Domestic and renewable. Domestic and renewable. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So far so good in the Mirai fuel cell car. We've managed to hit a corner or two and um, try the highway. Here we are driving down the lovely 405, hoping not to hit too much rush hour. The vehicle is quiet. Mostly what you hear along the, along the road is a slight bit of wind noise, the low rolling resistance tires on the vehicle. The sound signature of the hydrogen pump pushing the hydrogen through the fuel cell stack, which gives its own kind of constant sound. It's not quite like a CVT sound 
uh, or the CVT having the engine rev, it's a quieter sound, but you get a sound. It's not like a battery electric car where, you know, with a battery electric car, there's next to no sound except for the, the, the normal sounds that can't be masked out. The car is basically a pretty soft riding car. Uh, the center of gravity being very low does help with handling dynamics going around a couple corners. It allow the car to have some body roll. You know, this is definitely not a, a GS 450H or any kind of sporting vehicle. However, they have talked up the sporting pretensions a little bit of the vehicle. So uh, it is worth mentioning. Bump attenuation is pretty good. It's a it's kind of a smooth ride. At the same time, when you go around corners, the low rolling resistance tires will probably break loose. I haven't, in the time I've had it, not been able to do so haven't had any opportunities. It's uh, acceleration is pretty neat too. It's got instant torque. It takes right on off, not unlike a battery electric car in that respect, or a plug-in hybrid, except with a plug-in hybrid, sooner or later that gas engine will come on. And with this, of course, there is none. So this is the future according to Toyota. We've got a, a car that handles brakes, corners, accelerates, drives, handles bumps, does most things that you want from a car and why are we not surprised? I mean, Toyota really wanted to engineer a car that was fairly refined. They've done a nice comprehensive job inside and out. The whole integration of the package, the well-fitted seats made out of soft hex and the, the nice layout of the center stack and the, all the Prius design cues throughout, the outward visibility, the low sight lines, the rel relatively thin A-pillar. Sales for the vehicle will be projected uh, they're, they're going to try to under promise and over deliver but sales for the vehicle is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of only 200 units by the end of its first half year which is like next to nothing and then by 2017 here we go we're going to have 3,000 sales which is what is that about a good day for a Ford F-150 not even not sure but it's it's a very very long view plan scoffers take note they have tens of billions of dollars in the bank to make this thing happen and they're willing to burn through some cash to make it all work. They're going to make it work, so they say. The fill-up time and the range is also there. Unfortunately, with this vehicle, there's no such thing as a road trip at this point unless you know of a hydrogen station en route, which is not probable. <laughs>